The Gaussian plume model comes from the advective diffusion equation, which is the partial derivative of C with respect to T plus the wind vector dotted with the concentration gradient minus D plus K times the Laplacian of C equals zero. This is a mass balance. We're going to talk more in detail now about the D and the K terms. The D comes from Fick's law, which describes mass transfer by diffusion. In one dimension, Fick's law is that the flux in the x direction is equal to d, the diffusivity, times dc dx, the concentration gradient in that direction. And if you look in the appendix of the book, this is n. So f sub x is equal to the flux in the x direction. So this would be, if we're looking at mass, it'd be grams per area per time, so grams per square meter per second. d is the diffusion coefficient. Or diffusivity, which has units of meters squared per second. And then dc dx is our change in concentration with distance, so it's our concentration gradient. Let's draw a picture of this. If we have a box with two sides, and we have a bunch of molecules on one side, and a bunch on the other, and let's focus on our red molecules. We're going to have more on the right side than on the left side. These molecules, all of them, have some kind of random motion. And over time, we're going to get a flux of the red molecules from the left to the right, from the right to the left, because there's more on the right hand side. So we, here we have some concentration gradient. or spatial difference in the concentration, and that combined with diffusion leads to flux. Now let's look at turbulent flux. Fick's law told us about diffusive flux Turbulent flux is mass transfer due to turbulent mixing. So it's random motions in the fluid, not random motions of the molecules themselves. And it has a similar form to Fick's law. So F sub X is equal to KXX DC DX where KXX is the uh, dispersion coefficient also referred to as the eddy diffusion coefficient. And it depends on flow characteristics. In contrast, D, the molecular diffusivity, depended on the size of the molecule and temperature. The, uh, the K is a tensor. It's referring to, um, it's a, it has two dimensions to it. We just need to worry about it in the, in the X direction. And in this case, we have our box 
with a divider. And we have our black molecules and our red molecules. We have more on the right side, more red on the right side than on the left side. And now I'm not drawing the arrows on the actual molecules themselves, but I'm drawing arrows in the fluid. So we have these little eddies. These are little circles with an arrow on them. So random motions in the fluid lead to a flux from right to left. So again, we have a concentration difference or gradient combined with turbulent mixing that leads to a flux of the red molecules from right to left. Let's go back to the advective diffusion equation, dc dt plus u dot the gradient of c minus d plus k times the Laplacian of c is equal to zero. We're going to make several assumptions to get to the Gaussian plume equation. The first is that we're at steady state. This means that dc dt equals zero. There's no change in the concentration with time. The second assumption is that we have wind only in the x direction. In fact, we are going to choose our axes so that the x-axis is pointing directly downwind. This means that the term where we have u dotted with the gradient of c, which equals u dc dx plus v dc dy plus w dc dz. So that's the dot product of those where I've broken down my u vector into little u, v, and w's for each of the direct different directions, and my gradient of c is the derivative in each of those directions. Now, because we said that uh, we only have wind in the x direction, that means that our v is 0 and our w is 0. So this whole term just simplifies to u dc dx. Our third assumption is that k is much, much greater than d, which means that turbulence, or mixing due to turbulence, is much, much greater than any kind of molecular diffusion. And we're going to assume that k in the x direction is unimportant because transport, advective transport by u dominates. So we're saying that, okay, u might move things that far and k might move things just a little bit. So we ignore, so this might be due to k, we ignore dispersion in the x direction. And this means that the term minus d plus k times the Laplacian of c, well, first of all, we said that molecular diffusion is going to be unimportant, so we're going to call that zero. So our remaining terms are kxx d squared c over dx squared plus kyy d squared c over dy squared plus kzz d squared c over dz squared. We said kxx is unimportant. And so now with these three assumptions, our advective effusion equation at the top, we've lost a lot of terms. And so the with these assumptions, the result, if we, we can simplify the advective diffusion equation to u dc dx 
and I move that over to one side, equals KYY D squared C over DY squared plus KZZ D squared C over DZ squared. All the other terms were zero. Now to solve this differential equation, we need some kind of boundary condition. And that condition is Q equals the integral of U times C dy dz. Q is the emission rate. What this means in words is that the mass flow through a vertical plane downwind must equal the emission rate Q. which is in units of grams per second. So if I have my stack, and we have a plume height of H, and here's my plume coming out at some rate Q. If I go downwind and I look at a plane intersecting the plume, and I look at some concentration in space at that distance downwind, so it's C at Y, Z, we are at distance X. It means that if I integrate over that plane, the total amount of uh, flux through there, U times C times the area, has to equal what was originally coming out of the source. With this boundary condition, the solution to the advective diffusion equation simplified, so it's a differential equation, and the solution is C at x, y, z, some position in space, equals Q, the emission rate, divided by 4 pi x, KYY, KZZ to the one half power times the exponential of minus U over 4X times Y squared over KYY squared, or just KYY, plus Z minus H squared over KZZ. Now, what about K? Because the Gaussian plume equation has sigmas in it, not Ks. These Ks are a measure of the turbulent mixing. They're the eddy diffusion coefficients or the dispersion coefficients. So a bigger K means that we have more spreading in that direction. A bigger KYY means more spreading in the side to side direction. A bigger KZZ means we have more spreading in the vertical direction. So what we're going to do is to make a substitution to make the equation look more like the Gaussian function. And that substitution is, we're going to introduce this variable sigma y squared, which is equal to k2 times kyy times t, which also then equals 2 times kyy times x over u, where time is the time downwind from the, the source, and so that's equal to the distance divided by the velocity. Likewise, we're going to introduce sigma z squared, which is equal to 2kzz times x over u also. And then when we make that substitution, we get this form of the equation, c at x, y, z 
equals q over 2 pi u sigma y sigma z times the exponential of minus 1 half times y squared over sigma y squared plus z minus h squared over sigma z squared. I can rearrange this to make it look more like a Gaussian where we still have q over 2 pi u sigma y sigma z in front and then I'll separate out these exponentials so I have the exponential of minus y squared over 2 sigma y squared times the exponential of minus z minus h squared over 2 times sigma z squared. And if you go back and look at the format of the normal equation, uh, it's very similar to, to this.